Are you dating an avoidant or even have an avoidant in your life and are wondering, do they truly care about me? Well, in today's video, we are going to talk about the unexpected and subtle ways an avoidant truly shows that they care. And you have to remember as we unpack a lot of this that an avoidant attachment style has built their whole personality around not being vulnerable, right? That's become the biggest way that they've coped from pain or suffering that they experienced in their earlier years. And so small things to somebody else who's not an avoidant attachment style might actually be really big things coming from a dismissive avoidant themselves. And this is not me saying that, oh, then you should just stay in a relationship if somebody's not showing that they care in a way that's meaningful for you. But this is me saying that this can be a great understanding and jumping off point to evolve the relationship from if you have the insight and if you see that your avoidant loved one is also willing to do the work to grow with you. So let's talk about it. Now we're going to go through five things. And at the end, I'm going to give you one that comes with a bit of a caveat and may surprise you a little bit. So stay tuned for the last one. Um, the very first thing that's quite obvious, honestly, is that they will do acts of service. Now I say this might be obvious, but this is obvious to me, right? Somebody who has been in this field for a long time and who knows a lot about the ways that people will give and receive love, both through love languages, but also through their needs and the expression of needs. So a big thing that you'll often see avoidance do is they love most commonly through acts of service. And so they will do things for you. They will take your car in for you to the shop, or they will bring you a cup of coffee in the morning, or they will, you know, make an effort to bring the food over that you like. Like acts of service are a very easy way for the avoidant attachment style to love. And a big part of this is because it's a little bit less vulnerable, right? It's a, sh a showcasing of the care that's there, that they're thinking about you, that they're making an effort, but it's not necessarily as vulnerable as physical touch or as words of affirmation saying, I love you so much, or I care about you, or, or I can't wait for our future together, or even things like quality time where you have to be super, super present. So but now you don't technically have to be super present for quality time, but that would be the most effective form of it, right? So um, acts of service is a really big first piece, and you'll see this quite commonly. Number two, um, if an avoidant really cares, they will initiate plans. I know that there is this kind of like almost myth out there about it, avoidant attachment styles that they'll never initiate plans. Avoidant attachment styles are not often big planners. So they may not like plan their calendar in advance. Sure, they can do that. And there are some that will do that, but it's a little bit more unlikely. Um, but it, that doesn't mean they won't initiate. It doesn't mean they won't say, what are you doing this weekend? Let's hang out. And I honestly think that if you're in a relationship where somebody is never initiating, irrespective of their attachment style, including avoidance, and they literally never make an effort to make plans first, you're probably being breadcrumbed more than anything else. And I have other videos on this channel. You can check out one video. It's called How a Secure Attachment Style Reacts to Breadcrumbing. And it's a great video if you're just trying to get your bearings as to what to do here, what this would look like, what the best approach would be um, if you're being breadcrumbed. But you will see an avoidant attachment style when they care. They'll initiate, they'll reach out, they'll make plans. If you're supposed to see them on the weekend, they may even reach out and be like, hey, what are you doing tonight instead? And, and not like instead of weekend plans and canceling things, but they may even make an effort to see you during the week more um, as you're getting to know them, as the relationship is evolving. So I think that that's a really important myth that we want to check into here. Number three, they will communicate um, consistently. Now I want to break out something really important here. Okay. It's a small nuance with a big impact. And it's that if somebody is an avoidant attachment style, they may communicate less often than you would see, for example, for an anxious attachment style, or even for a fearful avoidant attachment style, but it can be less often than those styles and still be consistent. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for example, that you have somebody who's um, an avoidant attachment style. Maybe they don't want to text back and forth all day, every day, like you might see an anxious attachment style want to text, but it doesn't mean they won't text you like, you know, have a little exchange in the morning, a little exchange in the evening. Like they'll still have some sort of consistency there on a regular basis. Now, of course, how consistent that is will depend on how far into the relationship you are. Like if you're dating somebody for 
two weeks versus six months versus two years, there will be, you know, sort of shifts and changes there that will take place in terms of how consistent that communication is. But there will be consistency, meaning if you looked, if you could zoom out from the communication and look at it from like this sort of overarching theme, you would be able to look and be like, oh yeah, there is consistency. We talk basically every day and this person's making an effort. So that is a really important thing to check in with because I find that sometimes other attachment styles get so um, stressed by waiting for a text message back for a couple of hours. And then the mind gives all this meaning and goes, they don't care. They're not interested. They're going to leave me. You know, we, we jump to our worst case scenarios and our fears that were conditioned into us from our, our childhood experiences around love and connection. And so of course the mind goes there, but sometimes it can be so useful to zoom out and be like, Oh, my mind's telling this story. Cause I've been waiting for a text for a couple hours. But like this person literally texts me back every day and we still have this ongoing exchange and maybe it's early days still. So again, that will depend, like that will be a different conversation if you're having a quick exchange and you've been together for two years and you hardly talk. Um, but it's just a really important principle to keep in mind the difference between somebody texting less, but still being consistent, which from an avoidant perspective is definitely a sign of care versus somebody who like hardly text you and is extremely inconsistent. You hear from them once a week, maybe twice a week, and you've been together for more than six months, right? So just important things to, to sort of dive into there. Now I'm going to give you two last ones here. And the very last one's going to have a big caveat to it because it's a little bit more complicated than what it'll sound at face value. Um, but I do want to say that if you want to do a deeper dive into um, how an avoidant attachment style shows up throughout the six stages of relationships, if you've been following this channel, you know that we talk about the six stages of relationships derived from Dr. Susan Johnson's work. We talk about um, the dating stage, the honeymoon stage, the power struggle, the stability, commitment, and bliss stages. And that when we, you know, have these different stages, somebody's going to show up differently in the relationship. And this course will help you again, it's fully for free, um, for a limited time. This course will help you understand your attachment style. We have them for each attachment style or the avoidant, um, basically in the different stages, the fears that will come up, the wounds, how to communicate through these things, the best strategies to use for connection. Um, so I'll put a link to all of those courses. It's part of the membership pass that we have fully for free, just for a limited time. Now, the last two things here are that they um, will affirm the relationship. Now, you won't hear affirming the relationship happen from an avoidant in like a really big way. Words of affirmation is a love language, if you're familiar with the work of Dr. Gary Chapman. But um, needs are a deeper way that we give and receive love. And words of affirmation look different for different attachment styles. I'll tell you how. For words of affirmation for an anxious attachment style, they want to hear things like, I really care about you. I'm so in infatuated with you. I'm so in love with you. I'm, you know, I, I can't wait to spend time with you. I can't wait for a future together. They want like really vulnerable validation pieces or reassurance because that's part of how they grew up receiving love. And you'll see for a dismissive avoidant, they actually prefer the needs being met of appreciation or acknowledgement. So, Hey, you know, I really appreciate you. Or, Hey, I noticed you did this thing. Thank you. Um, or, Hey, I noticed you worked on that thing. I, I appreciate that. These small things are the avoidance way of affirming, affirming the relationship. And that is their, their form of, of love language in a sense, right? It's under words of affirmation as a love language, but it's appreciation and acknowledgement as a need. And that's how they receive love. So that's often how they'll give love. Just like validation in a deeper way is a big part of how the anxious preoccupied gives love because it's also part of how they receive love. And so um, you'll hear them affirm the relationship specifically through small appreciations, acknowledgement. They may say like small things like, I really like where this is going, you know, things that are not super vulnerable. And again, those are all definitely forms of the dismissive avoidant giving love. Last but not least, and here's the caveat one. Um, they will bring you into their lives. They will introduce you to people, to friends, to family. The reason I say that this has a caveat is this is what you'll see in probably, you know, 80% of dismissive avoidance over time. Okay. Generally you're seeing some sort of variation of this around like maybe four months to eight months into the relationship. If they're really interested, they'll move slower to do this, but they will tend to do it. What's that other 20%? Well, the other 20% is our dismissive avoidance who are more extreme. 
generally these avoidants have so much shame and have such a fear of being seen that they kind of cope with that. And this is because they, they usually went through some more severe emotional neglect growing up. And so they'll usually cope with this by basically doing whatever they can to not let people see them. Because if you were shame, you internalized a lot of shame because of growing up in a household where you were neglected as a child, deep down, there's this belief from somebody in this position that goes, okay, I'm, I'm defective. Something's wrong about me. Something shameful about me. So I can't let people too close and to really see me. Now, in this case, if you're not being introduced to this person's friends or family or brought into their life more, and they still like you, you will see other strong symptoms of this extreme shame. One of the biggest ones being that they'll be scared of you seeing their space. Often in this particular case, we'll have more extreme dismissive avoidance who like don't want to let people see their home or their space because they're just so scared that anything can be judged. Now, this is not me saying stay in a relationship forever with somebody in this particular case if they're not doing the work because of course it can be really hard to love and to care and to not even like be let into somebody's home or be let into their life in any kind of way. And and you'd have to set a deadline around that and communicate your needs and see growth and see if the needle moves um, in this type of relationship. But I also want to let you know to not personalize that if you are seeing those things, because sometimes this is much more reflective, of just really big shame wounds of the avoidant attachment style than anything else. And again, you know, you have to have those conversations and you can meet that avoidant with a lot of acceptance around things. And it helps to like help this person feel more relieved and less stressed. But those are some really important things to keep track of. If you are interested in helping make a huge impact on other people's lives while also building financial freedom, I'm offering an early bird 50% discount on our integrated attachment theory relationship certification program that will help you become a certified integrated attachment theory relationship coach and build your own thriving practice by the end of 12 weeks. This 12-week on-demand program will help you kickstart your new career by teaching you revolutionary tools and strategies that help clients transform their lives and relationships, build your own coaching practice, and set yourself up for a wait list of clients and financial success. Even if you have no coaching experience, this program will give you very in-depth tools, resources, and confidence to get started in a matter of weeks. And you can learn more information by clicking the link down below. So I'm curious if you've had that experience dating a more extreme dismissive avoidant and you see that they get scared to be seen in lots of various ways. Um, And if you see your loved one, friend, family, romantic partner, um, affirming the relationship, being consistent, initiating, loving through acts of service, all these things we talked about here today to help decipher whether or not an avoidant cares. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you want to check out those courses fully for free for a limited time, I will leave that link. And if you enjoy this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. I would super appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you in future videos. Thank you for watching.